when I was eight years old, I went to my first summer camp for a few weeks and the nature counselor had a telescope. It was, you know, the kind of telescope that today you would buy in Costco or something. But he pointed it at the mountains on the moon. And my little eight year old brain somehow realized that those mountains on the moon weren't very different from the mountains here on earth. And it just really got my imagination going. And um, from then on, and anytime anybody asked me, what did you want to do when you grow up? You know, you never know what to say. So, but I knew that I was interested in astronomy. So I'd say, yeah, I want to be an astronomer. I, I was not in the least convinced that that would ever happen, but, it, but I kind of meant it. My name is Claire Max. I'm a professor at the University of California in Santa Cruz in the astronomy and astrophysics department. And I'm also the director of the University of California observatories, which use two and soon three major observatories to do astronomy for all of the university. Adaptive optics is a general method to make images more clear and uh, to be able to see finer detail. So why are astronomers interested in it? It turns out that turbulence in the air actually blurs astronomical images. The light makes it from millions of light years away to the top of the Earth's atmosphere, and in the last 100 kilometers gets totally messed up by the turbulence. So our job is to uh, clean it up after that. My contribution has to do with how you measure the turbulence in the air. So what was done originally was you look at a, a very bright star that's near your favorite galaxy that you want to measure. And if the light from the bright star and from the galaxy are coming to you from very near each other on the sky, if you measure the light from the bright star and calculate its turbulence, then you know the shape to co correct the mirror for uh, for your favorite galaxy. But as you know, when you look up at the sky, it's mostly black, right? There, aren't any, there are not very many bright stars. And so to make this useful for any galaxy located anywhere in the, in the heavens, uh, we make our own star using laser beams. Sometimes it's called an artificial star or a guide star. It was my contribution to this field was in working through what one of the most successful kinds of guide stars was using a laser beam tuned to that yellow light of sodium that you sometimes see in street lights, that deep yellow light. That light, when you shine the laser up from the ground, when it hits a height of about 100 kilometers in the atmosphere, 60 miles, it makes sodium atoms shine. And they shine in all directions, of course, like a star does, but we use the light that makes it back to the telescope from those sodium atoms to measure the turbulence. The other thing I think I contributed, this had been done uh, in a demonstration way at the University of Arizona and at a, uh, one of the small telescopes in Hawaii and later in a telescope in France. And they were all kind of demonstrations that this could work. And what I was interested in is making these into broad use by astronomers for any object that they wanted to look at and to do what's called facility instruments, namely an instrument that's basically part of the observatory. It doesn't need a whole team of specialists to pat it on the back and keep it going every night. And we wanted to make it into a routine operation. And that's what we did. We first did that at a small observatory, Lick Observatory near San Jose in California, which was founded in the 1880s. So it's a really old observatory, but it's got new instruments. And then at the Keck Observatory, which is two very large 10 meter telescopes in Hawaii. You know, there's something that they teach you women in, uh, in science workshops, they say, fake it till you make it. So you don't really believe that you could do X, Y, Z, but you sort of muster up your courage and you say, yeah, I can do X, Y, Z. And then you work on it and pretty soon you can do it. But this, it's kind of like that being an astronomer. <laughs> Follow your passion. If you really care about something or you're really curious about something, go for it. I think, uh, yeah, I think the time is right for that. It was sometimes hard to do that in the past, but I think it's all doable now.
Hi everyone, I'm Matthew. I'm Carolyn, the producer of this video. Thanks so much for joining us for our new Women of Discovery series all about women in science. Tune in next month for our video with Jesse Christensen, an astronomer at Caltech. Make sure you subscribe because next week we are going to have a live session and we're going to answer all of your questions about the making of this video. So uh, leave any questions down in the comments and thanks for joining us.